Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I am a little stressed out this morning. Well, I, I was very stressed out. We had some crazy weather going through just like 45 minutes ago. We were in severe thunderstorm warning. We had tornado warnings popping up all around us, just a line of storms moving through our county. And then the weather people, and I get like an update on my phone too, that there's a nationwide radar outage at this time. And I mean, I don't even know what the people on the news were referring to, like, I guess, past radar, um, simulated radar going forward. Like, what are we basing all of this off of? That was just really strange. And before things got really bad here, like I was just woken up by heavy rain and I turn on the news and they're like, look at how much this tower cam is shaking. And I'm like, ah. because guys, I don't dig the severe weather, especially nighttime severe weather. I know it's early morning, but you know, it's dark outside. So you just can't see stuff coming. It's scary. And like, I'm just getting up and I'm thinking, well, it sounds like we're in an absolute wind tunnel, um, but I guess I'll make my coffee. The girls have come downstairs because they have skylights in their room. They hear any kind of weather pretty loudly. So they've come down and say, we're scared. And the kittens are like making this sound. I'm just like, please God, don't let my house blow away. Now it's all calm. Can't hear a thing out there. Hopefully nothing's blown off of the house. We've already had some shingle issues from a previous storm. So thank you, spring. Thank you so much. But now I'm feeling salty about the weather. We can talk about some makeup products that I'm feeling salty about because I feel like I haven't talked about things that haven't worked out as much. We're always on a roll with the favorites. It's very exciting to talk about new things that we love. But, you know, as time goes on, I do keep track of those things that really failed me. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And it's really coming from brands that I generally like a lot of the things that they make. Um, the first thing I'll mention here is this stick from Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place, I think it's an awesome brand for your eyeshadows, your blushes. I really like their foundation that's called I Am Magic. Uh, but this one, this stick, I saw that they had it on Amazon because I was just going through Juvia's Place. I'm like, is there anything I haven't tried? You know, I get that way about brands sometimes. And I saw they had a stick foundation and I love trying stick foundations. Got the shade Barcelona. It's called a shade stick foundation concealer contour. Tour. But yeah, this is Barcelona, and when I first got it, I thought, whoa, this seems really dry. Like, has it dried out? Did I get a bad one? It was like really dry at the top of the stick. And I went on and I like rubbed it on my hand. I kind of like warmed it up, got it seeming a little more creamy. But the takeaway here is this is a really thick foundation stick. It really does have a lot of coverage. I'll give it that. It's the kind of thing that if you were using it all over your face, I think you'd really want to blend it out with a beauty blender because it needs help breaking down. Mine just seems like a very dry thick foundation stick and it seems as though this is not a product that's being like mega stocked here. I don't think you can even get this on Ulta's website which would be the primary place I'd look for Juvia's place. I'm just not a big fan of this. I thought it looked heavy on my skin. My stick seemed unusually dry um, just to open up a fresh new makeup product and then you know I kind of got it to the point where it was usable but not a preferred product for me. Definitely on the drier thicker end of foundation sticks but again coming from a brand that I do really love. How about Too Faced. Too Faced has these new little palettes, which these were sent to me in PR, and I was definitely considering buying them myself. They're the Born This Way Warm Ember Nudes palette and the Cold Smolder Nudes. And now they do have Born This Way eyeshadow palettes of a larger size. I've talked about those before. We have the Natural Nudes. We have the Sunset Stripped. This is what these look like on the inside. Natural Nudes still has some warmth in it. Also a lot of just classic neutral tones. And then if you look at Sunset Stripped, we can see, you know, some more bronzy elements. We have some really nice deep rich shades. I actually like both of those larger palettes. But getting into these, um, Warm Ember Nudes, I was wearing this in, I believe, my last video. And in this video, I'm wearing the Cold Smolder Nudes. This one feels to me kind of like just a snapshot of the Sunset Stripped palette. Seeing that similar sort of burgundy brownish tone, I'm seeing the bronzy colors, the light shimmer. You are also getting kind of a rosy shimmer in here. And one thing about the shimmery shades. They definitely need to be applied with a flat brush, some firm pressure, and like a swiping motion. And even that may not make the most out of every one of the shimmers that are in these palettes. You might need to swipe on with your finger just to get the most effective product lay down. I did my look with this and I thought, okay, I like it, but given the fact that I already have this palette, I really don't feel like this one's necessary to get. There's just so many more blending options, different directions you can go, and they are charging close to $30 for this little palette. So I'm not huge on that. And it's not a very rare assortment of shades, is it? Now the cold smolder one, 
is a little more unique because these tones really don't show up in either of these larger palettes. So I'm wearing that today. Again, the same issue with the shimmers. There's about one way you can go if you want to apply those with a brush and it's firm pressure. It's a flat brush and just swiping across the skin. And even then you may want to lay it down with your finger. The neutral mattes here I thought worked pretty well. Um, I'm just not floored by these. And I think $30 just feels like kind of a high price. Now, if you are really craving the cool tones and you want that half matte half shimmer split. Maybe that's something you want to look into. This one pretty but again feels kind of like a snapshot of the Sunset Stripped palette. If you've got like larger palettes, larger neutral palettes from Colourpop, this kind of makes me think of Stone Cold Fox or shades that could be found in Bare Necessities perhaps. They're cute little compacts but I feel like kind of overpriced and not super unique. Another thing from Too Faced that I really was not super impressed by are these Kissing Jelly Glosses. This is another thing that I have the entire line of them. They sent these in PR and I just I'm kind of over the fact that it's all clear. I'm going to take this off of my lips. By the way, I am wearing the shade from Rimmel Lasting Finish in Coffee Shimmer. It's a frosty lipstick that I might have reached for in my high school days, but I still kind of like the tone, and I used Hard Candy Insta Pout Lip Liner in First Move with that. It coordinated very nicely, and then my Fruit Fetish Gloss from Milani. This is in Lychee Nectar. It's their lip oil. It does have some color to it, but what I'm kind of getting frustrated with are these things that really have no color, and I found the feel kind of annoying with this. Like my lips felt sort of smothered by this goo. This for example is what would appear to be the most colorful shade called Grape Soda. You do get some shimmer out of it, but for the most part these glosses are very like kind of clear transparent. You're not getting much out of them. And when I put them on I don't know what it is about it. There's like a heaviness. It's not a stickiness at all, but the lips just feel like wow, there is a thick amount of goo on here, and then I don't even get any color to show for it. I think the smell is nice on these. The packaging, you know, is cute. They look like something one might like, and maybe just a light amount on top of a lip look is how I could make them go for me. But on their own, it's like, man, there's just nothing happening with those, and I'm just not impressed. And it just feels good for me to get it off of my lips. That's not a good sign with a lip product. Oh my gosh, Laura Geller, my dear sweet Laura Geller. They slay it with the bake stuff, don't Thing. But I got a little set of Italian marble stuff when I did a gift card order. I got a cute little set, and there is part of it that I'm not quite so mad at that I think has potential. It's not my favorite thing, but it works all right, and it's this little eyeshadow palette. It's called the Italian Marble Baked Eyeshadow, and as opposed to being domed, it is just more of a flat, classic eyeshadow palette. But look at these shades. This was what drew me in. This was the part of the kit that I really wanted to try, and I feel like kind of when I move these shades, shades together, you know, like mix up the colors. I get three shades, these three on the end, that end up looking real close to one another, just kind of murky muddy. Now, I'm not opposed to some taupe on the eyes. In fact, I like a good taupey look. I'm not like really mad at those shades, and I think they're so interesting to look at. One is kind of light and rosy. Um, this other shade on the end is going to give you like a champagne-y color. That's that, and that's that. They're cool to look at, but I feel like I end up ultimately getting a lot of overlap out of what's happening here. If you just dab your brush around. Now, could you target maybe different specific parts of that swirled eyeshadow? Yes, you could, and maybe get something a little bit different. But if we're just get doing a little swirl and go, it's kind of a murky look, but I, I don't hate it. It's okay. Of the things I'm going to talk about, this thing's okay. But I was kind of disappointed in the blush stick. This is the Italian Marble Blush Stick. The shade is Pink Fiore, and it looks like it would be so pretty. You can see those light shades swirling in with the deeper rose, and it does amount to a pretty color, but they've got to figure out how to make these sticks more creamy because it just has kind of a dry feel, and the way I decided I would make it work was ultimately to just grab the product straight from the stick onto the brush like this, that's how I would use it, and then dab it on, but then I felt like it took more building, you know, than I was accustomed to because so many sticks are creamy enough to be swiped directly on the cheek and then blended out with ease. And you got lots of pigment, lots of color. This, I mean, that Italian marble idea looks like such a cool concept, but the formula of the stick, I think, is 
quite dry. Don't give me those dry sticks. I don't want them. And then the lipsticks. There were two different lipsticks that I ended up getting in that order. One came with this set. I'm not sure which one of these it was, but then there was another one that was just in my bag. And these are okay. I like the Italian marble look. I like the concept. I love a swirl, but I don't always get a consistent look with these on my lips. This is the shade Berry Vanilla, and it's okay. But like when I first got it, there was more of that like whitish shade at the top, and it actually looked kind of chalky on my lips. Now I've worked through some of that, but within the stick, I'm sure some more is swirled there, and I'll go back to a lighter shade. It's just like cool idea, but you're not always going to get a shade you can count on with these lipsticks. And then I have the color Alfresco here, and I've used some of these lipsticks before and have liked them, but I think it just depends on how much of the light shade is swirled in with the deeper color. Again, it looks okay if you don't have too much of the light shade there. Like I'm wearing, I'm trying to wear through some of the lighter color. It's all right. These lipsticks may not be the kind of product that I would fully recommend to somebody be like, yeah, go out and get those. It would be like, well, if the swirl color distribution wasn't really to my liking, you can get a totally different looking shade than what you think you might end up with. But I think the biggest disappointment of this Italian marble stuff was the blush stick for me, just because it was so dry. And I love Laura Geller stuff. I think there's so much high quality stuff. And I don't mind the kind of experimental seeming nature of some of these Italian marble products, but they're just a little more hit and miss. Now, I may have talked about these before from Revlon, but their new multi -play liquid glide eye pencils. The problem here is they've put out some shades that I think would be absolutely gorgeous as a lower lash line, kind of mid-tone color, shades of taupe, this murky kind of old gold, like a deep shimmery brown. They go on, the glide is so good, but the issue is they don't set. So they're very easily like rubbed away, wiped away. Um, they go on with such ease. And like I said, these mid-tones, they could be so perfect on the lower lash line might not provide a lot of contrast on the upper lash line if you're looking for that darkness at the lash line, but lower lash line, they could be so good, but I'm of course not going to put anything there that's not setting or isn't going to give me a shot at some decently long wear. If they could change their formula on these and make them something that sets, I mean, I'm honestly shocked that they don't. They're so easily rubbed away. And I'm not saying we're all doing an eye look and then sitting here rubbing on it, but if a product isn't going to set, even without aggressively rubbing it off, they'll just kind of fade down and they'll work their way out of that exact place that they were initially put. So those are not a real thumbs up for me. Milani makes tons of products I love, but this mascara, I'll use this on my girls, like getting them ready for cheer. And this is a classic example of how mascaras can work differently for different people. They have longer, thicker lashes, and I feel like they can handle this. This is kind of a rich, creamy formula tubing mascara, and it's not terrible, and I do like the brush, and I like its ability to not get smudgy on them or me, but this is just a heads up for those of you who have lashes like mine that are already kind of straight, want to point downward, aren't super thick. I feel like this is a little heavy and I think it pulls them down just a little too much. I remember using this closer to when it first came out and I think I had that sort of impression about it, but I retried it and I'm feeling the same way for me, but it works better on them. It just kind of depends on how much your natural lashes are going to offer the situation. I've said on here quite a few times that I think my favorite brand of false lashes is Kim. Hey, Betty. What's up, girlfriend? I like Kiss lashes. A very subtle, small reason why is that I think they affix them to their packaging in a less aggressive way. Compared to Ardell, there's less glue to pick off when you get the Kiss lashes, and I think the glue that they use to adhere the lashes to the packaging can sometimes be irritating to our eyes. And also, there have just been many styles of Kiss lashes that I've absolutely loved. But I got this glue, this Lash Couture Super Flex Strip Lash Adhesive. Um, they go on about how it has the soothing oat extract and how that actually has the anti-inflammatory properties and it's going to neutralize the pH of dry skin and do so many good things. Well, I went to use this over this past weekend. I was putting on some false lashes for our cheer showcase thing. And I know how to use lash glue, okay? I mean, even though this is not a wand applicator, you're gonna squeeze it out of the tube, you're going to get it along the lash band, you're gonna let that get tacky for a good amount of time, and then sit it on your lash line. Well, I did that. I thought things were going fine. I continued on with some other parts of my makeup look, and then I'm like, is my eyelash already starting to come up? And then the whole thing just lifted right away. Like, there was no good adherence with this whatsoever. And I thought, well, that 
that's a bummer. I went back to my $1.25 glue from Dollar Tree, my Ioni glue, and that, you know, held the lashes all day, and I took them off. Was not irritated at the end of the day, so that was good. But this seemed like it was going to be a really good, like, gentle but effective lash glue, and I think it was gentle, but I do not think it was really effective because, like I said, I definitely had them pressed down. I thought things were going well. I used a lash that I'd used several times before, so it was already really nicely formed to my eye, and it wasn't a situation, well, maybe the false lashes were just, you know, a thick band that wanted to pull off my lash line. No, they should have just stayed on there well, but it did not last, so this has officially rubbed me the wrong way. And that, my friends, is my chat about some makeup that I just did not love from a lot of brands that I usually do really love. And the disclaimer, as we always say, my experiences may not be everyone else's experiences. No two people may have the exact same opinion on a certain mascara because we've got different lash types. It's like having different hair types. But hopefully I just explain these products well enough so you might understand if it's something you would or wouldn't be interested in. And I do think it's important to point out the fails occasionally as well as the things that worked. I mean, I'll go through a lot of different videos and maybe I'm talking about this brand or that brand and it'll always come up, you know, here's the things I loved, here's the things that didn't work so well. So I don't feel like it's necessarily been neglected on my channel, but a particular video that's solely focused on it, I haven't done that in a while and um, I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you for watching everyone. I'm glad our house is still here. We did not blow away in the storms and I will see you all again very soon. I love you. Bye.